Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity on behalf of StarCast TV. Upper left hand corner, we have Min Shul, aka Sulky, as the Brownsburg, bottom right hand corner. We got Jum Jum, Jum, aka Shuttle, as the red Protoss. This is on Polaris Rhapsody, which the initial architecture, just the way it's got kind of a elongated two player feel, reminds me of Overwatch a bit for people that are familiar with that map. However, natural expansion, pretty standard stuff, pretty wide choke to try to defend. Mineral only at the interior locations. Single gas across the corner, but you can see you've got that wide, this wide edge to try to defend. So it's a small choke here to defend, but you got to go all the way around. You can see your Mutalist could be a hassle right there. And then at the 6 and 12 o'clock location, also mineral only. But the thing that kind of makes this map special is in the top right and bottom left, which Zerg could get feisty and go for, you got double gas. So mixing up which allows more rapid so basically if zerg can somehow get mutalisks out in the air and secure top right or bottom left you automatically have enough gas to go into some of that late game i guess mid game it accelerates the late game is what i'm trying to get at <laughs> i didn't mean to remove the menu map there looks like we've got a gateway opener which makes sense being that it's a two-player map overlord making its way across drone making its way out and actually already we're seeing a drone and I'm wondering if this is just going to go directly bottom left to go ahead and secure that double gas as the second expansion. In the mean, this, this drone scout's going to be huge as a result, actually. Seeing a later pool, or seeing a lack of a pool, and I'm wondering if shuttle... And on top of that, we got a gateway first opener. So this could be all sorts of harassment all the way around. So question one, ooh, sneaking it, actually, no. So sneaking it at the interior, nine. So the drone initially... I don't know if Shuttle's going to fall for this or not. So initially acting as though this was a pool build behind this. And I don't think Shuttle went... Oh, and the... Oh, the probe got killed as well. I'm not sure if Shuttle's fooled by this or not. Because that could have been a timing where he's thinking, okay, the, it was a pool first build. And so now I need to keep my Zealots back. But instead, we got a quick take at the 9 o'clock. But the secondary problem behind this is, is there's going to be an initial Zealot that could walk all the way to the main. And I have a feeling as this pylon remains unblemished, as time persists, no Zerglings attacking it, Shuttle is going to be more thinking, okay, there's got to be hidden hatchery out there somewhere. And actually, there was another drone that was out in the field, potentially to grab another sneaky hatchery someplace. Drone currently holding the line. Maybe this is just for scouting in between. The Zealot making it... Yeah, I think Shuttle's realized, okay, there's got to be another base out here somewhere. So starting to explore. I'm wondering if it's going to check top right first. Spotting pool finishes. Extractor on the way. We do have six Zerglings produced initially. Second Zealot, yeah, marching its way out. So just that little bit of confusion. Wow, the mind game's here. Just that little bit of confusion early. Sending the what would be Zealots, that typically would be aggressors out there, scrambling to find where this, addition, this new hatchery is. And a drone now attacking that pylon at the natural expansion. A probe being sent out as well to try to provide additional scouting information. This third zealot moving out. That's four zealots to start behind a nexus. And they're all out and abroad. And if Zergling Speed is researched behind this, which we'll see once there's 100 gas in the pool uh, to do so, that could actually be dangerous at the natural expansion. So now, also with that pylon down, that puts shuttle in the red. The zealot's making the way back. One's out pocketing at the 12 o'clock location. He's got to get back to home base, but still doesn't know where that additional expansion is. Additional Zerglings being produced. Going to be able to take that probe out. I'm wondering if that probe is... Yeah, it's going to be able to cycle around. Let's see if it's able to confirm that location. This is a huge, wide natural expansion. And there are finally a photon cannon down, but there are six Zerglings here. That's This is a thing where positional advantage could play well for Sulky. Ooh, mix it. that's not positional advantage right there. Trying to end around... Trying to get up to the main. Decent blockade. A single Zergling makes it through. More Zerglings getting stuck. And follow-up Zergling's going to be able to take down that cannon, forcing a cancellation there. So Shuttle sent that probe bottom left. I don't think he's scouted that base yet. In the meantime, there's two Zerglings in the main. Some additional Zerglings harassing the front. And Shuttle scrambling to get a cannon up so he can get some semblance of a defense at his natural expansion. So, at least in the early game, Sulky creating chaos, although his economy is somewhat impacted because he did take this distance 9 o'clock location, so that wasn't a location where he could very quickly reinforce with additional drones. Now his natural expansion coming up. Looks like he is making his way towards Layer Tech. The Zerglings continue to harass their way on 
Uh, attacking that gateway before that cannon is finally finished. Cybernetics Core dropping at the natural. Looks like a forge is in the main. Zergling now wandering up to go ahead and harass a little bit of that gas, maybe slow it down. An overlord making its way. So this is one overlord, maybe two overlords making the way to the front. And I don't know if this is indicative of a quick lurker play, potentially, to be able to snipe drones or maybe a quick contain game. We'll, we'll have to see as things progress. But I'm actually surprised that that overlord's being fielded further in, all things considered. Maybe he thought he'd be able to slow down that Stargate a little bit more effectively. But the Overlord also, I'm wondering if this was a mistake, having that Overlord in there with the Zergling. The Zergling checking out that Stargate, plus one weapons being researched a little bit later than usual because of just how many Zealots. Nice drive-by kill by that probe. But we have a slew of Zealots. We got six Zealots now. But where does Shuttle send them? Second gas being dropped, which looks like he does want to follow this up, potentially with maybe plus one weapons airplay, maybe a movement into Dark Templar as well. This probe has taken a lot of damage. I don't know if it's scouted that nine o'clock or not. Preventative creep colony being dropped. Zealots are marching their way across. The Overlord has at least spotted them up to that stage. Another hatchery now on the front. We have the Spire not yet built. And I think the Zealots, I have to assume this has been scouted because they're marching right towards that nine o'clock. Sutton colony, one third finished. The Zerglings coming alongside. I don't know that this is going to be sufficient, though, for all of these Zealots. They're not going to have plus one weapons, but this is still a massive amount of Zealots to deal with this well before those Mutalists are in play. Another hatchery being dropped. The Zerglings trying to delay things. So two hatcheries to provide a SimCity. That, this is going to be a lot of drone drilling that's got to happen here. So the drones pulling back. The Zealots initially pulling back to engage the Zerglings. Interesting. So not engaging. I'm very surprised by this. This... Granted, there's no Zealot leg speed. Checking the front now. Only a single something colony and a hatchery there. This is much better defensive posture, honestly, than I think the 9 o'clock. But with only a single something colony in that corner, the Zealot's actually exiting. Where I feel like with just a few amount of Zerglings that were in position, that might have been an attackable location. At least to scatter a lot of drones. Instead, repositioning and making a secondary attack at the natural expansion. Only a single something colony here. The Zerglings making their way back. Looks like they were at the natural initially. The drone's pulling off the line, drone drilling. Zerglings engaging, and it looks like the Zerglings are gonna get back before that Sutton Colony falls. Initial Scourge out as well. So uh, at least that Sutton Colony down, but ugh, I don't know about that now. The Zerglings able to swarm. So a single Sutton Colony, I don't think there was a lot of drone disruption there. For maybe some scouting information and nothing else, I actually feel like that the attack at the nine o'clock might've been I really feel like that attack of the nine would have been built more suited. We'll see though. These guys are the pros, however. Hydral Sten dropping, and that is going to bring the count of hatcheries up to six. Evolution Chamber on the front, so it looks like it is going to be a shift back towards six hatch Hydralisk. Also, a single Zelt just pocketed to the north, maybe wanted to catch a drone or something there. Granted, there has been a large investment in Zerglings, but this is still a very healthy drone count for Solki. Plus one weapons, just about finished on Corsair. But we've got four Corsair in the air, a fifth being built, a sixth out shortly. The Overlords have managed to hide location. I think there are going to be plenty of Hydralisks to help defend this as a follow-up. So I'm not liking Shuttle's follow-up odds. I'm really confused. Maybe people in comments can make uh, some thoughts about why that attack was pulled back from the 9 o'clock location. Maybe under overestimating the amount of Zerglings that were there on position to engage it. But then why attack the natural expansion? Uh, regardless... We have five Corsairs that are starting to stage up, want to start moving out in the field. We have Scourge out. Plus one armor is just about finished for them, but they need to be careful because those Corsair can take them out pretty rapidly. We do have a Dark Templar now out in the field, but the nine o'clock base looks pretty well defended. You got Overlords there, Hydralisks as well. Natural Expansion has an Overlord in position, a handful of Hydralisks, and I don't see after that last attack a massive amount of Zealots to really make a threatening attack at that Natural Expansion. So, a flood of gateways, however, to follow this up. Plus one weapons is fun finished. Plus one armor is on the way. The evolution chamber working on plus one spines for those hydralisks. And my concern with enough zerglings and the scourge and everything else, the zealot now walking up, eating about a, a bunch of damage in the face before retreating, is, is with the three gas and the hydralisk production and... I, I honestly think there could be just a solid stream of units off even the three hatcheries to start pressing out in the base because I don't think Shuttle's going to have sufficient... He just isn't fielding enough troops. Supply is just about even here. 
The Corsair is moving out. Looks like they want to pick off a hold position Overlord. The Dark Templar not in the field. At least getting an Overlord right there to slow down Sulky's economy. But the Hydralis is already starting to take position on the front. A very delayed contained situation. He can get Lurker Tech. Wrong location. He can get Lurker Tech immediately after getting range. He's easily going to be able to take out this forward gateway. Looks like we do have two High Templar behind this. An Overlord not in position, so that Dark Templar might be able to clear out these Hydralisks on the front. Let's see if... But that Dark Templar actually just deciding to plug the gap instead. Scourge chasing off those Corsair in the meantime. Now an Overlord sneaking in from with that... Uh, an okay size Storm. Now moving in with a good amount of Zealots. Wanting to make sure he doesn't get contained. The Corsair wants to pick off that Overlord so that Dark Templar can reign supreme on the front. Looks like he is able to pick it off. And also some nice size Storm scattering the rest of these Hydralisks. So now Solki in a degree of retreat. So pulling back to the six with those troops, this is going to open up shell where he can go ahead and grab a third if he wants. I am a little bit concerned about turnaround tech where if Solki stacks a lot of, well, if he just builds a bit of a bank, what he could do is a sudden tech switch to Mutalisk. But that requires taking care of these Corsair. Another Overlord picked off, which is going to allow that Dark Templar to do a lot of damage if it uh, proceeds. Another Overlord sneaking in. The Corsair trying to make short work of it. And wow, he's been diligent at picking off every Overlord. More Overlords moving forward. Still, the supply counts, if you look at it. Oh, that Dark Templar actually... That is a clever maneuver. Pinning in the Dark Templar with the Hydralisk so it wouldn't be able to escape. So now Shuttle has a skeleton crew of an army on his front. His front is somewhat breached because that gateway is no longer there. A handful of Zealots are walking out to their doom because that is not where they want to engage, particularly against range units where they pile up and run into each other, just waiting for those Hydralis to come back across the bridge, then thinking twice of it and backing back up. I mean, if it was a smaller amount of Hydralis, maybe he could engage there. But just two cannons to defend. Beautiful Psy Storm, though, catching a lot of those Hydralisks. But the Corsair trying to create some distraction. At least they're holding a handful of these Hydralisks back, but Lurker Tech, keep going at the wrong location, Lurker Tech is now finished. And in a moment, it's potentially going to be nothing but a Lurker Contain after Lurker Contain after Lurker Contain on the front. We do have the first Observer being built. No Lurkers yet morphing here, but Sulky free to grab additional expansions where Shuttle is still locked to just two bases and even on supply, not where he wants to be. Sulky eating a size storm there, but continuing to press things up. Gonna back that Lurker just a smidge to the rear. That cybernetic score looks like it is gonna be able to finish Dragoon, the Dragoon range, but there's not a lot of Dragoons behind this. A whiff of a size storm there. The Observer doesn't have, uh, doesn't have to worry about it because no Overlord in position, but Shuttle has to worry about just getting full breach here because he does not have a lot of troops to deal with what Sulky is throwing out. And honestly, Sulky doesn't even need to press this, but opting to do so anyway, getting great spread damage and has great position on the ramp where he's just going to annihilate units as they're coming to reinforce. So one Lurker getting wiped out, but this is just a, a thread of what's left. Two Corsairs still out trying to get something happening in the background, but not a lot of units left. Two Hydralisks just walking through a cannon in the main that was there to defend against Mutalisk, potentially. Archon being forced, that's going to be two less storms that would have been on the front, and a huge amount of reinforcements making the way. And this is before level two spines. Yeah, there's GG from Shuttle. Well played by Sulky top to bottom, and it just feels like that mind game that happened at the start completely threw him off and just sort of snowballed into problems all the way into this stage of the match. But Sulky executing well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.